Greetings, I'm Bob Foley from Robert Foley Vineyards. I've got a few of our wines to show you this evening. Uh, first we'll start with the Pinot Noir. This is the 2014 vintage of Pinot Noir from the Hudson Vineyard, which is Napa Carneros. Uh, we're the sole producer of Hudson Vineyard Pinot. It's a very small block. Uh, there are two clones in the vineyard. One is a, a, a Pomard clone. Uh, the other is a UC Davis clone, so we get a masculine uh, expression from the Davis clone and a more feminine from the French clone. Um, the wines are vinified separately, they're aged separately in different barrels and then blended after one year and then bottled. So this wine was bought, was, the grapes were picked in uh, harvest of 2014, it was bottled in September of 2015, and now it's been bottle aging since then. So the beautiful sort of berry and floral interplay of Pinot Noir flavors and aromas are, are evident here, and the structure is beautiful. Um, this was a, what I would call a full-bodied Pinot, yet very finely balanced with beautiful acidity, so the finish, the finish in this wine just goes on and on and on. This is a, a very serious Pinot for, I know a lot of people are have opinions about California Pinot, I really invite you to try this one. Fantastic food wine. And ageability is, is gonna go on forever. The magic of, of Carneros is this uh, cool climate, a lot of natural acidity. And the wines, you know, their ageability is based on that acid content. So I'll be looking forward to tasting this wine when it's had 20 years in the bottle. It's a baby at this point. Uh, I know there's a lot of pressure for wineries to get their new vintages out and get them evaluated by the press, but my early teachers, Joe Heitz and Andre Chelichev, uh, drilled it into me that uh, when you are going to make fine wine, take the time to do it. So bottle age is important to us. So these are some older vintages, but they are the current release. So now we're on to 2014 Merlot. Um, Boy, I've been making Merlot for a long time. I mean, I think my first vintage was 1976 when nobody knew what Merlot was. It seemed like everybody in the Napa Valley knew what Charbonneau was, but they'd never heard of Merlot. It, it, it was uh, not taken seriously and there wasn't very much of it around. But I created um, several Merlot programs over the years and now I'm working with my favorite ones. So we grow Merlot uh, at the winery on Howl Mountain at 2,000 feet elevation where it's very masculine in character. And then we also grow it in Calistoga where we get a more feminine character. So this is the blend of the two, 100% varietal Merlot, but a blend of two AVAs, so mountain fruit and valley floor. Right Merlot to me smells like cassis and currant. Um, there's nothing green about this wine, very dark fruit, um, and displaying uh, beautiful ripeness. On the palate, full-bodied, front-to-back, side-to-side, smooth as can be, yet a big mouth-filling wine. Um, I get flavor profiles of, again, cassis and currant, maybe an insinuation of Halloween candy, which I love. This is a charmer to go with food, and if I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, full-bodied foods, red meats, um, but it can carry just about anything. So people often ask how we age these, uh, these claret varieties, the Cabernets and, and the Merlots. Um, I was taught, again, by Joe Heitz and Andre Chelyshev uh, at an early age, in, in, in a very early stage in my career, when I was in my early 20s, um, to be careful not to over-oak the wine. So I've had you know, the critics all over the world taste this wine and say how beautifully the oak is integrated with the fruit. It doesn't stick out. Also, the fact that this is 2014 vintage, it's had time um, to really assemble itself in the bottle. Integration is important, but it, we are careful not to over oak. We use French oak barrels. Um, we use Center of France medium plus toast, um, but we also use only about a third new, so 18 months barrel aging. Well, I'd like to show the Claret now, which is our flagship wine. When we started this brand in 1998, we only had one wine. In fact, 98 through 2001, those first four vintages, um, the only wine that Robert Foley bottled was a Claret. Um, I had 
limited resources. I lived on Hell Mountain. I've lived on Hell Mountain for over 30 years. And I had some Merlot and some Cabernet, but not enough really to make two wines. So I decided to blend them together. My choices were to make a fanciful name, um, call it Meritage, or at the time I was legally allowed to call it Claret. And I liked the, the idea of Claret, sort of a traditional uh, term for left bank wines, and my wine was certainly a left bank-esque blend, so a Cabernet-based blend. So in the, the years that we've been doing this now, for over 20 years, we've put the resources in place to be able to create a Bordeaux blend with uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, which is 80% of this blend, 17% Merlot, and 3% Petit Verdot. Um, this is what I call a sacrosanct blend. It's the first blend that I make during uh, the time of year, typically in the, in the spring, when I put my blends together pre-bottling. This one gets dialed in first. The best of the best Cabernets that we've got uh, blended to create the base wine. Then the Merlot goes in to add the mid palette, and the Petit Verdot goes in as the finishing component which adds the, the acidity to raise the aromas of everything, lengthen the finish, and add the insinuation of wild violets, which is typical of uh, Petit Verdot. I should point out that the Cabernets um, that we have, we have mountain fruit and we have valley floor fruit. So we grow Cabernet in three mountain vineyards, I'll talk more about that later, and then the valley floor. So you get this beautiful masculinity uh, from the mountain fruit and femininity from, femininity from the valley floor fruit. Um, to again give you this textural perfection is what, what, really what I'm looking for. So all kinds of red and black fruit interplay in the aromas in this wine. And my first sip, you know, I just, I feel this elegance and I'm talking about the feel on the mouth. It's soft in the middle, gentle in the tannins. They're there, they're gently gripping. But uh, um, there's, there's nothing about this wine that isn't seductive on the palate. Flavor profile, again, red and black fruit, a hint of sort of vanilla kind of flavor. Um, and then the finish is crazy. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going. Um, one of the amazing things about the Robert Foley Claret is how it evolves in the glass. So your first sip, you go, wow, that's, that's, this is, wine's really great. And then you, you go back and smell it again after a couple minutes, and then you can kind of hang out with this wine for 20 minutes or a half an hour and just keep watching this wine evolve because it opens up so beautifully. There's so many layers to it. And it's 100% claret. Cabernet Sauvignon was really the, my introduction to wine when I was a, was a child, really. My parents were getting me drunk. No. <laughs> so Cabernet, I, I, my first job out of college, I went to work for Joe Heights in, uh, in the mid-70s, but my parents planted Cabernet in 1964 when I was in grammar school. So I've been around this grape, you know, basically most of my life. Uh, and have dedicated a lot of my um, uh, career to developing Cabernet. Um, we grow Cabernet Sauvignon at Robert Foley Vineyards in three mountain vineyards and one uh, lower elevation AVA. So the AVAs where we grow Cabernet are Atlas Peak, Mount Vitor, Howl Mountain, and Calistoga. In Calistoga there are several blocks. So each one of those AVAs produces a wine uh, the AVA in Calistoga actually produces several wines because there are more than one block and more than one clone. Um, so what I'm looking for in Cabernet Sauvignon is uh, textural, uh, textural evenness and aromatic and flavor pro pro profile uh, complexity. Um, the valley floor gives us this nice rich mid palate. The mountain fruit gives us structure, uh, more acidity. And the insinuation of the terroirs of the mountain, which are contributions from uh, the soils, which are largely volcanic, and the aromatic forests that surround the vineyards, uh, laurel forests on Mount Vitor, 
pine forests and, and fir forests uh, on Howell Mountain, and then the forests of uh, Atlas Peak, which tend to be more scrub oak. So each, one, each forest smells different and gives you a different contribution to the wine as the aromas get trapped in the grape skins. The Purple Label Cab, which is our, you know, our utility Cabernet Sauvignon, is a 100% varietal wine, but it's a blend of all four AVAs. It is aged for 18 months. Um, the individual components are aged for 18 months in uh, a combination of um, seasoned, neutral, and some new oak. Again, only an insinuation of oak in this wine, about 30% uh, new. So the blending is done at the end of the aging cycle, so at 18, after 18 months, uh, and then I'm blending for aromatic uh, marriage and for textural uh, evenness across the palate. For my palate, ripe Cabernet Sauvignon shows black, black cherry components. Um, None of the greenness that you would associate with uh, unripe Cabernets, um, none of the pyrazines. Ripe Cabernet, truly physiologically ripe Cabernet should taste like black fruit. Um, this wine lays on my palate evenly, beautifully, and just enough grip in the tannin to make me want to have something fantastic to eat with it. And there are a million different foods that go great with this. My personal favorite is with steak, but uh, we're not having steak right now. <laughs> That's a mistake. So the ripeness is quite evident, yet the acidity is, is driving the finish of this wine, which is astounding. I mean, it's, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon from, from hotter climates, California, to a fault, you know, there are they, they could be acid deficient, but the mountain fruit provides the acidity to give this kind of finish and this kind of structure. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>